start. Mm, let's go. So, mm, in watercolor, usually we uh, get disappointed by its uncertainty. Uh, so, how can we uh, fix this problem? Uh, if we are not experts in drawing, um, working with subjects when where we see flat repeated uh, details can help us enormously for example in the case of Rialto Bridge we see all those arcades that uh, repeat the same shape different uh, number of times and we see symmetry here uh, the left side is the same size than, uh, and shape uh, than the right side. So we can start, start uh, from the central line. Uh, we need um, to draw at the beginning, but just simple shapes, you know, uh, without caring a lot about proportions. Uh, we can start, you know, just finding the very middle uh, of the paper and we place our bridge. I'd say we start from the one third part of the upper uh, half of the paper and just draw a small horizontal line something about one inch and then let's draw two, two oblique lines not very sharp corner you know not going too much down uh, but going to the central points on each vertical border of the paper then maybe it's too big maybe half inch is enough I'd say very small so we can place our bridge so basically, we need this in order to draw a small arcade. I think that any of us can draw a simple small arcade. It is easy. Just if you can't do the arcade, at the beginning just draw a rectangle. And after that, you add half circle on top. So now we find two points on half distance of each side of the arcade and then draw just a slight oblique line parallel to the initial oblique line so we will need these lines to find the position of the smaller arcades. So we are basically adding um, more elements starting from the central small element. So this is easy. On the left of the central arcade, let's draw other two vertical lines. And this will uh, complete the design of the central element of the bridge. So now on these oblique lines we start drawing smaller arcades by drawing that little rectangles and on top of each 
another half sphere, semi sphere, and then another one here. Don't try to be too precise. We don't need it. We just uh, repeat the same elements, creating a nice rhythmical repetition of their case. Rhythm is one of the major principles of organization in your artistic composition. And um, uh, the essence of this principle is um, creation of the impression um, of movement. visual impression because our eye our vision uh, is uh, inclined is uh, drawn to move along the repeated elements and this creates the impression of movement rhythmical compositions they look dynamic uh, here we have also a symmetrical repetition of those two uh, rows. Uh, this, uh, for this reason, uh, we have um, symmetry usually creates an impression of stability and of something uh, that is not move, moving, that, is, uh, that remains still. So we have a balance here between rhythm and stillness between movement and stillness, rhythm and symmetry. So, I think this was easy. Not caring now about the proportions. We just, uh, if the composition looks uh, too small, we just leave free space around it. Uh, now let's draw other ob oblique lines which will be the roof of the bridge uh, another well let's make the top of the roof of the central arcade there is a little thickness here but you know we're just uh, make a small shadow so just we're not caring about the drawing now uh, the perspective and uh, the other stuff so uh, here we need to draw this uh, big arcade the, the bridge shape you know the arc of the bridge shape but we need to find um, the bottom where the bridge touches the water and this will be we can see it very well here and it's underneath the fourth arcade i'd say underneath the column of the fourth arcade one two three four so let's draw a vertical line here and the same here and um, how can we find uh, the height? So um, it's about same height of uh, the bridge in the middle. So somewhere here. Uh, just trust your eye. Like this, something like this, and. Maybe more flat, like this. Mm. Then, another thing that strikes our attention, let's go ahead with creating arcades, because all our composition is based on the arcades. And we see other one, two, three, five arcades behind the bridge on the facade of the building that is behind. So not caring about the building, just see 
the position of their case. Um, let's start with the first one. It is uh, pulling down uh, the um, right hand line of the central arcade. Pull it down and the same position. Okay, here just this is a little line that is the thickness of the bridge. We see the lower side of the bridge. And so here we draw that the arcade on the building behind. And just note that in this space of the uh, width of the central arcade, we can place uh, tech in two, two arcades, two widths of the arcades behind. So these are just a little um, comparison of the sizes that are easy um, to make okay and they look one um, the the left side are case they look uh, lower than the right side because of the perspective but uh, it is easy to see their height because of the arcade of the bridge so you know when you have when you are not experts in perspective it is easy to find uh, the correct size of the elements uh, when you just look um, on their position if compared with something that you have already drawn so this um, this approach makes it easy because you start with just one element and then you place all the neighbor elements one by one so you can easily compare uh, each single element's size and position uh, so basically this area is all prepared let's find also um, the shape and the position of the shadow part of the building behind so it will create the impression of depth it is easy to create the impression of depth we don't need to draw all the oblique lines of the walls that are um, distorted in the perspective so just one almost rectangle it will be a little bit oblique but it doesn't matter and uh, then um, it will be very nice if we manage to uh, draw tiny arcades on top of the building and they will be these are dark and these on top they will be on um, uncolored so it will be kind of challenging but it's interesting because the same shape but uh, the like negative painting and just try to make it uh, live in a little distance between them so and this will be will create uh, the contrast between big and tiny this is also a composition trick that is good to keep in mind while we are creating a painting and it makes your painting look uh, interesting intriguing No, I'm just drawing um, we can do it uh, directly with color but you know just creating um, a pencil sketch can be helpful and uh, that's it so here we will paint water here we will paint almost nothing maybe just 
uh, trace of the side the wall then the roof here that's it uh so it's a little arcade here maybe if you want you can uh, not draw it it can be interesting almost abstract you know uh the picture is just um, uh, an inspiration to create something almost abstract and there will be piles in water piles are very typical of venice and uh, we will have fun finding uh, their rhythm because they're just almost lines and uh, mm, they are used uh, basically here to park boats so maybe some horizontal line behind them that uh, will be our boats and that's it not painting gondola uh, on the on the back on the for foreground that's enough so let's start painting and uh, we will choose very limited um, uh, color palette I need paper towel here let me find the paper towel. Okay. and sound again okay. let's prepare colors I have four different brushes here so the medium size is my preferred size but uh, you can use whatever size you feel more comfortable um, I will um, advice this size for beginners it's from like five to eight uh, size and uh, this is uh, synthetic uh, soft brush it it says here oil paints and acrylic but i find it uh, handy for watercolors as well so um, Let's prepare ultramarine, ultramarine blue, and primary blue. Can you see my palette? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Then some ah, oh, this is green, huh? This is new for me. I need brown, I don't need green. Okay, brown. So, no green here. Brown. So this is Mars brown or sepia, some neutral uh, brown. Then at this point, let me see if I have black. 
does not lack. I'm sure you fuck know. Um, this is not black. This one. <laughs> then black. So let's put it here. Black. And we will start with black and blue mixture. Black and blue. So it should be pretty wet. Enough water. Enough water. You need a good bucket of color. Watercolor needs a lot of water and pigment. Uh, we rarely, rarely use uh, color pigment directly from the brick or from tube. Uh, we always prepare it on our palette and um, the palette uh, should be able to host uh, enough water. So flat palettes are not recommended at the beginning. And then I will just start to color our rectangles. Um, I keep a paper towel close to my paper because it helps me to soak up the exceeding liquid from the brush so when i color i still have a little pearl of liquid on top of of the paper but uh, it's not too much. It's important that I control the water quantity. And I'm just doing like this, like this, accurately coloring. Okay, again, uh, don't try to be too precise. Just, you know, it's important that each shape is separated from mm, the other from, from the other one um, now um, maybe if you are if your shapes are less wet they will dry out quickly so at this point let's do wet on wet uh, let's add some other pigment so I suggest uh, the um, ult ultramarine but only wet on wet so they will mix together and this will create a little variety of colors then let's go ahead and we get here and then I will show you in the central uh, in the middle arcade what we do let's paint it directly with ultramarine uh, as you can see the central arcade uh, it's not all dark because there are two arcades and you can see um, through them so we will paint only the right um, part inside of it and we can also um, let it be it, and then on the left with some ultramarine but we will let it be uh, kind of uncertain so you know don't care about being precise and um, repeating all the shapes just some dark it's important that we 
uh, emphasize the outer shape of it. What is inside, just leave a few white spots inside, that's okay. And then here. You can also start on top of the rectangle with uh, black and blue mixture and then on the bottom with ultramarine. I have a big brush but the top is very thin and actually I'm working with the very tip of my brush. And this helps me uh, to control uh, the boundaries very well. But even if they are not that sharp, uh, you leave these white spaces between your elements and you will be able to recognize the rhythm of the repeated elements. It's important that they not blend all together because uh, you will mm, lose that impression uh, of rhythm so like this here we see a little shadow we can create something like this wet on wet just uh, bleed the right side of the last arcade, add the water and add some ultramarine on the bottom that goes on the bridge and down the bridge. If you want, you can use bigger brush here. Something like this. And then again with ultramarine underneath the lower part of the bridge and then some dark blue and then again diluted here this will be water so for now, just leave it like that. It's important that it goes all um, to into white paper. So dilute it and make it disappear in white paper. And now with ultramarine oh this this was not ultramarine this was blue you can use actually primer um, primary blue here so using the third color we will create um, a new plane is it is the background so maybe trying to make it very light because it's far away light and uh, while you move to the left on inside the arcades on the background you make them lighter and here you can continue the arcades on the water and then like this with horizontal movement of the brush okay they can end up in paper. Now we need this part of the bridge emphasized. Let's take again our primary blue and paint their uh, rectangular shape behind the bridge carefully going around the bridge that will remain white 
or you can go also here with the shadow underneath the, on the left side on the arcade that's okay uh, in this approach we are kind of uh, uniting together different shadows on different objects creating a bigger silhouette uh, colored spots so um, we are painting an abstract basically uh, inspiring uh, getting inspired from um, the real subject if it's wet or wet let's add some more color here Okay. Now it's time for the tiny arcades on the on top. I will grab tiny tiny brush here like this with the same primary blue and I'm painting around uh, the prepared drawing of the tiny arcades. Uh, creating basically that um, decoration that looks like um, like an empty arcade you know this is um, I don't know how to call the shape of this detail uh, onion shape that is that has a little window inside and at this point it's important to be uh, patient enough to make them all otherwise um, they will look really weird so when you paint something tiny like this uh, and its function is merely uh, decorative just be patient to draw all of them otherwise it will lose its sense its meaning The same blue and this is this uh, part of the wall is already dry so I'm going over it again because I don't want to look this row of arcades separate from the wall I want them look uh, just one shape uh, personally I don't like uh, a tiny brush some people they feel themselves more comfortable with the tiny brush I prefer to use the um, very tip of the bigger brush because I control better the brush strokes but it's up to you uh, also I make them kind of uh, touch and unite all those uh, shapes so um, as a final impression we can see only um, bigger silhouette with um, white windows in it Maybe this, uh, these, mm, these windows, I made them too far from each other, so I correct them. Here it's already dry, so I put another layer. Layers are that uh, in watercolor they are called glazes. 
so glazes look really nice if they are transparent and they look really watercolor and the glazes technique comes from uh, the medieval and from the renaissance times uh, when artists used uh, egg tempera and in egg tempera technique if you want to achieve the impression of depth uh, the light and shade effects the only way is creating uh, hundreds of glazers and um, when in Renaissance times, painters, painters started using uh, oils, uh, they continued using glazes. Uh, so now in watercolor, mm, we always work in glazes because it's uh, the only way <laughs> to achieve the mm, impression of depth as long as we have uh, water as our main element and in oils painters use a thicker matter uh, thick brush strokes which started basically in the 19th century with the impressionists So create a shadow of behind the right side of the bridge with which is the shadow of the building basically. But you know also uh, starting with the rectangle and then just going around with some abstract brush strokes and let's go back to black and blue mixture and paint another cake here behind the bridge with a little shadow underneath the roof and with pure blue another shadow of the building behind it and we can make it like this like this and make it disappear as if there was a fog behind it so now it's time for um, the piles uh, on the foreground we have our brown but we will need also some yellow okra can you see the palette some yellow okra So, and very easy vertical and not really vertical but they will be a little bit oblique all in different directions and then added some brown wet on wet and okra here and there not the same on all piles these piles are typical of the foundation uh, of um, all buildings in Venice because Venice has no ground foundation. There are all uh, thousands of piles that are mm, deeply placed in the mud. Shorter and longer, and maybe a little bit thicker, like this, and live in white space around them. 
maybe some lighter brown and tiny uh, piles closer to the bridge so like this and now we will paint water so water basically the, the channel uh, let's grab let's grab the red this is cold red that is primary red or magenta not uh, cadmium red that is usually a warmer red and mix it with brown so it's a little bit uh, complex so maybe with bigger brush maybe let's start with bigger brush and take some primary blue And I mm, take the flat brush and mm, as you can see when I place it um, on its side I get uh, thin brush strokes and when I pl place it uh, directly on uh, uh, when I lean it along its shape it gives me big big uh, rectangular brush strokes when it lean when i lean it um, uh, close uh, its handle close to the um, paper it gives me that um, shape or that effect of thorn uh, brush strokes so let's add some red here and make it flow to the blue and make it disappear in paper maybe some okra so add in some co um, some color some uh, complement a complementary color and yellow is complementary to red uh, to blue and red is a triad uh, completion so we have three colors blue uh, yellow and red Here, maybe let's create a zigzag effect of reflection. Like that, with the tip of the brush. And also some blue. And let's repeat some red here too so we don't have it just an alien color in one part of the composition Okay, what I need now another okra and 
let's paint a few roofs in this area let's add some red basically also to create a balance of reds here one two three red spots there will be a few white arcades here but we can create just one two three four four uh, shapes like fluid shapes around our decorations on the wall on the roof And here the same, it will be flat line on top and we need to go around our decorations accurately on, on the lower part. Again, basically, this is these are triangular shapes that I'm trying to paint. I'm not going around uh, each and every um, curve of my shapes. But what I need, I just want to uh, have that. Uh, contrast between the okra and the blue so I'm not covering <laughs> my arcades with the um, color of the roof if there are white spots that's fine because uh, this will create the effect of the light uh, dropping on the decorations again some okra with red so we basically have red okra and there are a few other roofs here behind that are just uh, rectangular shapes that are cut sh uh, sharply on one side and then have something like this and something like this maybe too dark that's that's enough if you paint it this way maybe some okra here So, almost done, maybe what we need here, some more colors on the water. You can play with glazes, creating ripples on the water of the channel. And darker something darker underneath the bridge because uh, we will have the darker shadows in this exact area
Was it easy? I think so. As you notice, we, we didn't do any windows here behind. Uh, so maybe if we want, we can paint another another okra shape in this area. So just to close the composition on the left side, because there are buildings uh, on the left side of the channel and on the right side. So the right side, we already have something. So maybe another, another wall here, you know, just um, starting with the vertical line on the left side of the bridge and then um, pulling to the left the color and making it disappear in white paper. So this is watercolor technique. So uh, we, we, we still have some boats to make with black maybe. These are horizontal shapes between uh, the piles. And some of them, uh, some files can go behind the shape. Oh no, not this one. Maybe this should be. Uh, I made a mess here. So when when you make a mess, uh, just blend it all like this. Yeah, so higher they can go behind. Okay, like this. Maybe some here. Okay, so now I'm happy with the balance. Maybe this is too rectangular. So, so this is it. So now I'm happy with the painting. Mm. 